So let's get you moving with a wall-based Pilates series. We'll start with our breathing, placing your back against the wall, sitting in a position that works for you. So give your legs crossed, feet wide, knees wide for support or legs long. But if you can, try and make sure the back of your pelvis is up against the wall which allows for a gentle low back curve. You should feel your shoulders, back of your shoulders up against the wall and the back of your head up against the wall there, whichever position you choose to go for. And the main focus here is breathing. So a deep breath in through the nose if we can and out through the mouth. Focusing on the expansion of the rib cage in particular into the wall. So we've got that instant proprioceptive feedback of the wall there. Forcing the air out through a pursed lip as if we were blowing up a balloon. And that switches on your deep abs. One more big breath. From here we've had a little focus into the back of the rib cage. now let's go into the side of the rib cage. You will need to decide on how to sit comfortably up against the wall. So I've got a little fourth position on the floor. You could cross your legs. We want to have the rib cage up against, or as close as we can, shoulder being here as well, up against the, up against the wall. We will need to lift the arm overhead and breathe into that rib cage. So feel that expansion on the side up against the wall here. You can use your hand as well. Feeling like your rib cage is an accordion that moves in all directions, but paying particular attention to this wall size. Brilliant. Obviously, we're changing sides. Take some time getting into position. Pause the video if you need. Breathing into that wall. So this breath control will help you to get a control over that pelvic floor, the deep abs. So it's well worth paying a little bit of attention to this in the beginning before we get moving. Returning to your back up against the wall. Again, choose your leg position. I'm going for legs crossed for now. So when we're sitting with our bottom right up against the wall we should feel a gentle low back curve shouldn't be able to pop the whole arm back there that's too much of a curve so roughly hip bones and pubic bone lined up vertically and then for us ladies with the um, curve of the pelvis we just gently tip forward a teeny teeny bit and we should feel a low back curve there and now we're going to go from this which is our neutral spine gentle curve in the low back and then gentle curve in the back of the neck there for our rib to hip connection, finding those abs, find your low ribs with your thumbs, your hip bones with your fingers, and exhale. Tight in the tummy, feel the low back press towards the wall, inhale to release. Exhale. Gently drawing those abs in, feeling that contraction, feeling that strength, allow the pelvis to return back to neutral. So we're feeling those crisscross obliques working when we exhale, last one. Like that, good. To warm up the hips, you may find it more comfortable to do this with your pelvis slightly forwards of the wall, particularly if you're very tight in the hips. We're going for a parallel alignment, so your knees lined up with your hip bones, those bony bones at the front, not the outsides of your hips, hip bones, and feet. Nice train tracks in place, hold on to the floor, decide whether you're comfortable to have your pelvis up against the wall or not, you may not be yet. Knock one knee in, slide that leg away, don't worry about fully straightening the leg, this is about the top of the thigh bone circling in the hip. Open that knee, draw the knee back towards you like a little frog's leg and then close, roll it in. We're going for full range of motion without rocking the pelvis forwards and back or side to side, so you're not cheating, you're keeping it smooth and gliding, try and keep that foot relaxed, 
and reverse. So we open the knee to the side. You don't need to touch your knee. You can hold on to the floor. Good, easy breathing here. Trying to keep the shoulders open up against the wall, the back of the head against the wall. That was three. Changing legs, knock that knee in. Slide it away, don't worry about fully straightening. That's not the goal here. It's about moving the top of the thigh bone inside the hip joint, finding some mobility and stability there. Finding the full range of motion that's available to you today. And change direction. So we open the knee to the side, slide the leg away, roll it inwards. One of those directions might be more challenging for you. You may be trying to rock and roll the pelvis, try and keep the pelvis steady, both sit bones anchored into the floor. When you've done three, I might put a bonus one in there for you, then feel free to stop. Good. Into our spine rotation. We started this a little earlier. So that roll towards the wall. So again, I've got my little fourth position on the floor, my left tuck behind me. Feel free to find a position that works for you. I'm trying to get quite close to the wall. Lifting the arm up. Now, bent elbow is fine too. Keep a little bit of that rib to hip connection we found, but don't feel you need to go into imprint with the spine. So just keep a bit of tension in the tummy. Hold on to your knee for a bit of support or hold on to the wall. And twist, twist, twist. You can bend that elbow there. Look behind you, take a deep breath in. The spine is spiraling up towards the ceiling and then return. There may be some satisfying clicks and cracks as you do that one, but we are not trying to compress the discs. We're trying to lift up and out of the hips. Any discomfort, don't go towards the pain. We're trying to keep everything smooth, gliding and under, under control. Deep breath in, exhale, move. Take a deep breath in here, look behind you. This really helps if you're a driver with reversing up and around a corner. Okay, changing sides may or may not be necessary for you. So, again, try to get nice and close to that wall. Lift that arm up, bend the elbow if it helps. It helps me. Take a deep breath in. Now, you will notice the difference between your right and left sides. So don't judge yourself harshly. Just keep moving and notice. You may feel tension across the front of the pecs. Don't push into it. Just feel warming into this area here. Some people are really tight across the front of the shoulders due to modern life. Computers driving, reading and working. Take a deep breath in. And a touch of mum life, if you like me as well. Right, so come away from the wall. We're going to be placing our feet on the wall, uh, bare feet or grippy socks, even slipper socks would be great, just to get a bit of grip so you don't slip and slide your way through this one. So this is gorgeous, this makes you feel like you're having a little massage for your spine. You need to play around with how close your bottom is to the wall, so feel free to wiggle and shuffle at will. No one minds. I don't mind anyway. Knees lined up with hip bones, feet lined up with knees, toes pointing away, not turning out and not turning in. We're going for even work of the inside and outside thighs. Hold on to the floor and press into the back of the triceps, the back of the shoulders. If you're not happy with your positioning, please change it. So we go into that imprint that we did in the beginning, rib to hip connection. Put your... <laughs> Put your pubic bone into your belly button, or at least imagine you could. Gently peeling, first your pelvis, then one vertebrae at a time off. When you're comfortable, stop. Think, yes, I've gone quite far enough, and then roll back down. This is where you decide that you want to walk your feet down or up the wall for the next one. So I'm going a little higher with my feet here. Take a deep breath in, push the back of the shoulders into the floor. Find that rib to hip connection. Put your pubic bone into your belly button, peeling the spine off. Don't go too slow. Cramp is not fun. Take a deep breath in and then roll back down sequentially one vertebrae at a time. It should be smooth, gliding, almost oozy. You should be aware of any vertebrae that feel fused together, any of your discs that are BFFs and they do not want to be parted, but we're going to give them just a little bit of breathing room. Try and keep your gaze up towards the ceiling. 
Now, I'm trying not to get you to push up onto your neck. I want you to stop when you're resting on your mid shoulder blades, on, your, on the middle of your shoulder blades. Try and find that place and don't go further. We don't want to put pressure into the neck. Notice if you're rotating right or left. So maybe you've got one strong, one glute stronger than the other. I myself have a lazy left glute. I'm working on it, progress is being made, but uh, these things take time. So you may be starting to feel a little fire on the back of the legs. Maybe you're already there and you're crying quietly whilst trying to stretch it out. Deep breath in and then roll back down. So to stretch that out, we could go nice and simple, we could pull one leg in, gently hug it behind the back of the thigh, not into the back of the knee, and gently stretch and bend. A flex at the ankle here, so an active foot is brilliant, but if this is too torturous for you, just soften that foot and go for something close to a ballerina toe, as long as that doesn't cramp. Good. One more. Just finding the length in the back of that leg, changing over, gently guide it towards you. Try not to bring tension into the shoulders. Exhale, lengthen, inhale, return. We try not to get to that place where you're shaking and fighting your own leg. We're just thinking easy, yawning breaths. Yeah, you might find that tremble, <laughs> but we're trying not to get to the place where your uh, muscles seize up in response to protect you from doing any damage, so we're just going nice and easy. This last one is eight, should feel really good. And gently walk the feet down. Brilliant, and we're coming up. Well done. Finishing with just a little bit of shoulder work. I know you've got legs after that tomorrow, good luck. <laughs> Pelvis back up against the wall, bottom up against the wall. Arms in front of you, like you're holding an A4 folder or shoulder width folder or box, and gently glide the shoulder blades together. You should feel them in the wall, gliding up against the wall, and then separating. So this is not an elbow bending exercise. Just keep those arms easy and long. Glide the shoulder blades together and apart, together and apart. And you'll be much more aware of the muscles between and around the shoulder blades. Good. Gently drop the hands and lift and lower so we're elevating and pressing the shoulders. Now we're not going to a place of pain, just the easy smooth gliding movements, well done. Once you've found a place in between those two, optional shimmy, love a shimmy, we draw some circles forward, side and down with the arms. Now depending on your range of motion, comfortable range of motion, you may be gliding your backs of your hands up against the wall, but if that's too much because you're clicking, cracking and crunching and feeling pain, then keep it within this kind of a space. So investigate, be curious about the symmetry, aiming for symmetry in your body and drawing easy, smooth gliding circles. Good, well done you. I'm looking forward to you levelling up in the next session. We will be doing out curls. Something to look forward to, right? Well done.